few weeks ago, I think three or four weeks ago now, <clears throat> after the last couple of years, we had, uh, you know, the, our world turned upside down with uh, uh, COVID and isolation and mask and, and new rules and, and vaccines and illnesses and uh, lots of things going on. And then it, it seemed like we were, uh, had turned the corner. We were kind of getting out of that. And, and things were getting better. And then we, the world was struck with the invasion of Ukraine. <clears throat> and I'm not going to speak on that in, invasion today, but in regards to that, I think a lot of us were shocked. Uh, I know I think back, I uh, wasn't... Uh, here for the last two world wars, and yet there's been talk about perhaps this is the beginning of the third world war. I was around uh, the uh, police conflict in Vietnam. I didn't have to go over there. And I was around for a couple of other conflicts that uh, our country was involved in. And as I think of those, and I'm not a politician, but I think there were reasons for those actions and, and countries invading other countries. But in the current one, it's hard to find the reason for that. And so I think that's why it's unsettling for so many of us. And I understand uh, just, I, I've really gotten to where I don't watch the news very much now because <laughs> it's kind of depressing. But I uh, saw some last night and over 3 million people have been evacuated from Ukraine into other countries at this time. And as we think of <clears throat> those people, whether they're believers or not, their world is turned upside down. They're, you know, I mean, we earlier when uh, in the uh, Sunday school time, Benson was up here and I heard a siren, uh, the, the sound of a siren coming down the, the highway. And, and, then I kind of slap myself because, you know, why am I distracted by that? <laughs> but something like that, you think, what's going on? What, are they just chasing a speeder or somebody have a wreck or something happening? And we, we deal with things like that. Uh, those of you who have to commute to work, you probably see, you know, some kind of accident or uh, car crash. Uh, maybe some people are offended by calling them accidents, but... Uh, you see something, emergency situation uh, every day or, or once a week or whatever. But we don't experience anything like what the people in Ukraine are experiencing. Some of you have served in the military and you experienced what uh, the, uh, the, the servicemen there for both Ukraine and Russia are uh, experiencing. The, the stories we get... Are, uh, that I've heard are that those Russian uh, soldiers who have been captured, I mean, we probably only get certain stories, but uh, they didn't understand what they were doing. They were just following the instructions, which is what a military person is supposed to do. And so they were not happy with what they were having to do. But, and then they were surprised at how humanly they were treated by their captors. But a lot of unrest, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of uh, turmoil. And so as I was thinking about that, uh, whenever this came about a few weeks ago, here's the portion <clears throat> that uh, I turned to. Isaiah chapter 26. Now, we were all over the place earlier. But <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and I think we were in Isaiah for a little bit. <laughs> but uh, Isaiah chapter 26. I want to just read... Four verses there, beginning at verse 1. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. 
Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. That's from the King James Version. <clears throat> the thing, the, the theme that I, I thought of here and that I want to convey to you today and share with you is really centered in verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. <clears throat> I was talking with some people yesterday. I forget what the subject was. <laughs> but it was we, we were all males. <laughs> and we commented that we as, as males, as men, want to be in control. Any women agree with that? So, <laughs> so, <clears throat> I know the men don't always agree with it, but we do. We want to be in control. We want to protect our families. We want to protect our wives, our children, uh, the people around us. We want to display an attitude of strength and confidence. But in reality, we are nothing. We are not capable of doing what we would like to do. But when we focus on Isaiah 26, 3, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. <clears throat> As I begin studying this or, or meditating on it and thinking about it to share with you <clears throat> some time back, I got to tell you, you know, personal experiences. So I was, uh, I, don't, I don't have to go into the office every day, <clears throat> but on, and during the two years that we were all turned upside down, the traffic was easy whenever I went in. <laughs> Nobody was on the road hardly. So, so I, I, but I only went in once, once a week usually that time. And then uh, last year started going in three times a week, so... But when I was studying on this one day, I caught myself. The traffic was a little bit heavier than what I had gotten accustomed to. <clears throat> and before COVID, those of you who commute, you know that you know the traffic patterns. At a certain place, you need to be in the left lane. and a certain place, you need to be in the right lane. Maybe if there's a center lane. Uh, at a certain place, it's going to back up no matter what. So you try to, maybe you can judge the time and you, you hit that at, at a time when it's not going to back up. But on this particular day, <clears throat> the car in front of me was going too slow. The car behind me was coming just fast enough to where I couldn't get over. And then they slowed down. You know, you ever have anybody do that? <laughs> and so the, I'm fuming because, you know, I, I want to... Get around. Now, I'm probably going over the speed limit already, <laughs> but I'm thinking, I, I, this is, what have we stopped here for, you know? And I want to get around. And then as soon as this car to the left of me pulls up enough where I could get over, I pull over, and they slow down even more. <laughs> and so I'm stuck now, and I'm thinking, okay, do I go back, <laughs> or what do I do? <clears throat> and the Lord kind of tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, what have you been reading? Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that he's going to control the traffic, but he can't. <laughs> but what he told me was, I was not in peace because my mind, my heart, my thoughts, my attitude was focused on being in control of the traffic situation. Now, how foolish is that? Because I have no control over them, only over what I'm doing. And whenever I'm boxed in, I don't have much control over that. So. But he reminded me, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. And I don't know that I can apply this on, in every instance, but whenever he brought that to my mind, to my attention, I could literally feel myself relax. Not to the point that I ran off the road or anything, but I could feel myself relax and say, 
why am I rushed? Why am I stressed? Why am I thinking I have to get around these cars and go faster? If I'm late, I'm late. If they fire me, I'm better off, you know? Well, they're not going to do that. I've asked them to before to fire me, and they won't. So, but <clears throat> we, we tend to focus on things that we can't control. And God says, focus on me. He says, I want you to pay attention and understand that I have a plan for you, that I know my thoughts for you. They're thoughts of peace and comfort, thoughts to bring us to an expected end. They're not thoughts of turmoil and dissatisfaction and frustration. And yet, those are the things we tend to focus on, especially whenever we think we're in control. I don't know about you, but whenever I, I think I'm in control, I'm really not. And if I, afterwards, when I stop and think about it, I can see that. <clears throat> so in this portion here in Isaiah chapter 26, <coughs> excuse me, you know, it, it, it's, it's a portion of prophecy, but it's also a portion of history. And I looked at several um, commentaries to, to try to, you know, I mean, I think there's a danger in pulling verses out and just saying, hey, uh, this is, in English, this is what it says, so this is what it's there for. <clears throat> and I do think we need to focus on Him, and we will be in perfect peace. <laughs> but in this particular portion, <clears throat> there, at that time, there was turmoil in the land of Israel, in, in, in uh, Judah, and in, in, um, you know, where Isaiah was, <clears throat> but there was also, he was also prophesying, looking ahead. Now, Benson is impressed on us that we shouldn't put too much emphasis on what prophecy says. Is that what you've told us? No, okay, too much emphasis on interpreting the specifics of Revelation. So, <laughs> so but yet, I, there's, there, the commentaries say this looks ahead to a time in Revelation and, and uh, <clears throat> to a time that we, we've yet to face. But in the four chapters here, between chapter 24 through 27, one of the commentaries tells us that it's one continuous poetical prophecy. Now, poetry and prophecy, you know, those are two things that uh, probably I'm not an expert on. So <laughs> but, but it's one continuous poetical prophecy, descriptive, of the dispersion and successive calamities of the Jews, the preaching of the gospel by the first Hebrew converts throughout the world, the judgments on the adversaries of the church and its final triumph, thanksgiving for the overthrow of the apostate faction and establishment of the righteous in lasting peace, here in Isaiah 26. Establishment of the righteous in lasting peace. What is that going to look like? For us to be in lasting peace. Now, some of us would say, you know, for the last 20, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years even, maybe we feel like we've lived in peace. We haven't had a major war going on here. <clears throat> we've had wars in other places. We've had uh, military conflicts in other places, but not here. But we haven't had lasting peace. There's been turmoil. There's been disruption. There's been, even in individual lives, you know, we, we deal with things that we think, God, why are you putting me through this, you know? Isn't that our first response usually? God, why are you doing this to me? Rather than, God, what are you trying to teach me? <laughs> that would be better for us if we would look at what he's trying to teach us. So... <clears throat> um, As the overthrow of the apostate faction, the commentary goes on to say, the overthrow of the apostate faction is described in the 25th chapter, so the peace of the faithful is here described under the image of a well-fortified city in chapter 26. So if we, another one says that if we 
look at this period in chapter 26 of restoration, <clears throat> it is historical and it is prophetical. Isaiah, in his prophecies, having them a certain comprehensiveness of plan and structure and a certain organic relation to history, such as can be revealed only by the divine maker of history himself. <clears throat> I don't think Isaiah or anybody else could put the, 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 the things together that God inspired to be written and to be applicable. <clears throat> if we write something today... And 50 years from now, people read it. They may not have any clue what we're talking about, how to put it together. But God inspired his word to be written thousands of years ago that's applicable today and fits what we're going through. The commentary says, It took a man of large parts to see above the wreck and ruin and through the darkness of his age such visions of hope and promise as Isaiah saw. Now this next part of the commentary, I know I'm not here to speak on commentaries, but <laughs> sometimes they have a lot better things to say than I would. So, Here's what's interesting. This commentary says, Speaking of Isaiah's time, Everywhere around him were sensuality and oppression. The church of the true God had been almost swallowed up by the foul dragon of paganism, and yet the prophet with his eye on the future beheld a day when this song was to be sung in the land of Judah, the song of salvation. What strikes me is that center portion there, everywhere around him were sensuality and oppression. The church of the true God had been almost swallowed up by the foul dragon of paganism. I'm speaking of Isaiah's time, but it sounds like our day. Everywhere around us is sensuality and oppression. You know, I can remember as a teenager, um, young adult, whatever, my parents and grandparents being offended at some of the things that were on the radio or TV, the language, the, the innuendos, the uh, insinuation, the references. And I thought, oh, come on, you're just being an old fuddy-duddy. <laughs> but today... I'm embarrassed by the things that we have in public. The things that we have on TV, I think there's good reason for us to say, you know what, I'm going to turn that thing off. <laughs> I'm not telling you you have to do that. <laughs> the words of songs, there's nothing left to the imagination today. And so when it's said of Isaiah's time that everywhere around him were sensuality and oppression and the church was almost swallowed up by the foul dragon of paganism, it reminds me of how many so-called churches today are only looking for attendees who will pay their dues. And they want the money. And they'll preach whatever it takes to make you feel comfortable coming in and handing over your money. And that's not what the Word of God says. But yet he does say that he will keep us in perfect peace when our mind is stayed on him. And that's what we as true believers need to be focused on. We don't need to be focused on the things of the world. We need to be like Isaiah and be able to look above the fray. Be able to look through the things that are surrounding us. I mean, it's distressing to see the things in our world today. 
But yet, I can look past that, not every time, but I, I try to, because that's not where I'm going to be for eternity. And I know that God has a plan. I know that His plan is perfect. I know that He's going to complete His plan for us, His bride. And He's not going to divorce us, as we heard earlier. So. <clears throat> In the Believer's Bible Commentary concerning uh, this, this portion in chapter 26, regarding verse 3, which is our focus today, they point out that Philip Bliss used to say, I love this verse more than any other verse in the Bible. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. I don't know. Some, I, I don't know about you, but whenever people say, what is your favorite verse? I struggle with that. <laughs> because how do, how do, I think, how do you pick a favorite verse? You know? I mean, how about, can you give some of your favorite verses? <laughs> we, there's, there's many verses, <clears throat> and which of them don't make any sense? Which of them you know, we, we, we shouldn't depend on? I, I see that Bob's left. I don't know if he did because he knew I was speaking. or No, I'm sure he didn't do that. But <laughs> I remember one time that question was asked. I forget what the setting was. It was here at the chapel or at a dinner we were having or something. And, and he gave some verse. I don't know the reference. <clears throat> but when you read it, it sounded like nonsense. <laughs> and, and, of course, he was just being funny with that. <clears throat> but God's word is important. And I don't know that I can find a favorite verse, but uh, <clears throat> Moody tied verses 3 and 4 together in the following words. The tree of peace strikes its roots into the crevices of the rock of ages. They realize at last that in Yah, the Lord, or Yahweh, His everlasting strength are the rock of ages. So in, in verse 4, we read, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. That's in the King James. In some of your translations, it might say, is the rock. And it's my understanding that this is the verse that the hymn August Top Lady wrote, uh, actually the words you wrote, but then it turned into a hymn, Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee, came from. <clears throat> now, there's much uh, discussion on, uh, you know, just how he came to write that. I'm not concerned about whether he was actually caught in a thunderstorm and, and uh, hid in the, in, in the side of the mountain and, and uh, wrote these words or not. We also found out in looking at it that there's been several revisions <laughs> of, of the uh, uh, song that we now have today. <clears throat> but let me just read you this as we think of <clears throat> being in perfect peace when our mind is stayed on God. Rock of ages, cleft from me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Cleanse me from its guilt and power. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyes shall close in death, when I soar to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. I think when I'm most stressed is when I'm not abiding in the Lord, when I'm not focused on Him and I'm trying to do it myself because I can't do it. And yet, I think I'm required to be successful in being in charge and being in control and taking care of things and seeing something through to the desired outcome. But I need to focus on Isaiah 26, 3. 
and be in perfect peace as my mind is stayed on him. In Matthew chapter 6, I can't turn as fast as Vincent did, so. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up, this is the Lord himself speaking, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <clears throat> when we go back to Isaiah 26 and we think, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. We think of the mind as being this thing in our skull. <clears throat> and that's one application of it. <clears throat> in Scripture, we also find that as a man thinketh in his heart, And so then we think of this thing that pumps blood. But somewhere between these two is the spiritual aspect of our mind, our heart, our reasoning, our being. And as our being is focused on the Lord, then we're kept in perfect peace. For where our treasure is, where... Our mind is. There our heart will be also. Someone read earlier today in uh, John chapter 16. So I jotted that verse down because I think it also applies to us. John chapter 16 Verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Again, the Lord speaking. These things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you have tribulation. Well, I can agree with that. Be of good cheer. I, the Lord Jesus Christ, says I have overcome the world. I don't want to make light of the situation in Ukraine or the situation in the United States as men say, women say, right is wrong and wrong is right and whatever you want to do, you should be able to do it. I think it's a tumultuous situation. But we as believers can stay our mind on Him, on the Lord, on God, on His Son, as the Spirit dwells within us, and He will keep us in perfect peace. Shall we pray? Father, we thank You that we don't have to take control because You are in control. We confess, Father, that the situation in the world around us is disastrous in our minds, in our way of thinking. We grieve for the people in the country of Ukraine and in Russia and the surrounding countries who are enduring such pain and hardship. And some have no way of escape physically. We grieve for the people in our country who have t- allowed their minds to be completely turned over to the evil one and who say right is wrong and wrong is right and whatever sensuality and obsession they have they want to justify and protect and then enforce it on others and it's a dire situation in our way of thinking but we rejoice Father that you are in control 
And that while we don't understand all that you're doing and how you're doing it, we know that you have plans for us. And we know that you promise never to leave us or forsake us. That you won't divorce us. You won't abandon us. And we pray, Father, that as your word encourages us, that our heart will be focused on the treasure of being at peace in you. that we will focus on abiding in you and you will keep us in perfect peace regardless of the situation around us. You don't say that you'll take away all the trials. You don't say that you'll make everything nice and flowery and acceptable. But you do tell us you'll keep us in perfect peace and so we thank you for that. Father, if there's any here today who've never come to the point of accepting your son as their personal savior, then undoubtedly they have no idea how that peace can come about. And so we ask, Father, that your spirit would convict them of their sin, that they would confess and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that they might experience new life, eternal life, and the joy of your peace dwelling within them. We ask these things and give you thanks, Father, in Christ's name.